Hi, I am David Ezekiel, Transitional Minister for the First Federated Church of Peoria. Welcome to our midweek moment. Yesterday marked the one year anniversary of the death of George Floyd. His death is infamous and as a result, his history and character are being both eulogized and demonized as he becomes a target of the ugly culture war that is engulfing the West. But what do we actually know about the man? Who was he? That part has been overlooked, at least not told, in the debates on social media. George Floyd's personal story is one of faith, of trying to escape the lifestyle of drugs and crime that surrounded him, and working to improve his community. Floyd was closely involved in a church in Houston, and friends have spoken of his deep spirituality and his concern for the people around him who were involved in violence. In one video, he states, one day it's going to be you and God, you going up or you going down. In another, he urges his community, I've got my shortcomings and my flaws and I ain't better than anybody else. But these shootings going on, man, I don't care what hood you from. Man, where you at? Put them guns down. Floyd grew up in poverty in the tough third ward of Houston. And when you don't have opportunities, poverty is hard to escape. Still, he has been described as a gentle giant who had big hopes for the future. Unfortunately, his environment encouraged bad choices and he was convicted of several drug offenses and spent five years in prison for armed robbery. This prison sentence prompted a change of heart. He was rehabilitated. Following his release, he got involved with the church, Resurrection Houston. Its website describes a focus on making disciples in the region as well as a heart for social justice. George Floyd was a person of peace sent from the Lord that helped the gospel go forward in a place that I never lived in, said Patrick P.T. Ngolo, pastor of the church. Moreover, the change in lifestyle inspired others around him. His faith was a heart for the third ward that was radically changed by the gospel, and his mission was empowering other believers to be able to come in and push that gospel forth, then Jalen uh, Dunn said. Floyd was a gateway for the church to reach out to the community. George Floyd wanted to see change in the community. He wanted to live a better life and be there for his children. Speaking to CNN, Friend and former NBA player Stephen Jackson said, The last time I talked to him was about a year ago, before his death, and every conversation we had in that year was about bettering ourselves and being better fathers. That's all he talked about. His partner, Courtney Ross, describes him as a deeply spiritual man who stood up for people. He was there for people when they were down. He loved people that were thrown away, Ross said. We prayed over every meal. We prayed if we were having a hard time. We prayed if we were having a good time. Like many who have a background with drug use, his faith didn't give him an instant pass out of troubles. The Houston Chronicle said that his continued problems with drug use was the reason he went to Minneapolis to join a drug treatment program. Was he perfect? No. The Bible tells us we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. However, a person might choose to judge George Floyd's character or his faith, but his life was precious and its brutal end still a tragedy. He was still a child of God. Floyd's death at the hands of Minneapolis policemen was caught on multiple video cameras, which showed he was not violent or out of control or behaving in a way that warranted intensive restraint. He repeatedly told the policeman holding him down, I can't breathe. After nine minutes and 29 seconds, he breathed no more. His story highlights his love and concern for others the difficulties of his community, and the challenges of a person coming to faith who has a drug dependency. He was the epitome of the old saying, I'm not what I used to be, and I'm not what I could be, but thanks be to God, I'm not what I used to be. 
Many are now hoping his death will bring about lasting change. I'm one of them. Maybe the era of a third reconstruction effort will succeed. Maybe the third time is the charge, is the charm. Oh Lord, I pray that it's so. Beloved, let me close with this statement. The God we worship is bigger, more welcoming, more just than we realize. And the Redeemer calls us to a radical love of one another as family together for each of us. Each of us is a child of God made in God's image. I'm David Ezekiel, and thank you for allowing me to share this midweek moment with you.